what he said is true that I'm trying to stand up for something. I want to stand up for our God because he is so great. But I am not always like that. I used to be a not so good person back then. So today is we're gonna hear the whole truth and how I pick up my courage to become the person I am today. So my name is Ethan. It is really an honor to be here. I run two YouTube channel. One is called Project Hit Christian. This channel is with me and my wife you see on the screen. And then we talk about the Bible and the history and tradition and uh, to understand the Word of God. The second one is called AI News. AI stands for I in Chinese, I love in Chinese. So it's about current events, it's about the news. It's mainly about how we should use the Bible to look at today's politics and social issue. For example, the LGBTQ agenda that really corrupts our world and that corrupts our children, corrupts our school and how we should do to stop it. And we should stop something that's evil, like abortion and stuff. But today, I am here to talk not just about my ministry, but basically how I become the person I am today, how I met Christ and changed my life. And before I begin, I have to admit that I don't really have a crazy testimony. You know, I, I was never a gangbanger, you know, never got a gun and shoot up place and then, uh, I was never a drug user. I, I never got into a car crash or tried to kill myself or anything like crazy. I just want everyone to focus on the changes in my life. You know, I used to be a very arrogant person. I thought people with faith are like kind of like cuckoo. And uh, I thought Christians are under like these math, mass hypnosis. They're backwards, they're ancient and uh, dumb. So I chased after world success and end up with nothing. It wasn't until I'm fully broken down, okay? I gave up my pride, I gave up my arrogance, and then that's where I found God. And I found that purpose in my life. So today I'll be sharing about how I find the happiness in my life and how to find my purpose. Okay, it's weird to do a presentation about yourself because you go, go to these uh, Facebook posts and you find this old picture with weird hairstyle. So that's all me, yeah. So my life was pretty simple. My family came to the States when I was 11. My mom and dad separated when I was very small. So I never really had a example of being a man is. And maybe because my family was so broken down and my mom was always busy with her work, I really wanted a family, but I just don't know how to say it. And now I analyze it, I would say I was looking for love. Who's looking for love right here? Oh, nobody. Okay, okay. Weird church, not looking for love. <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to use love to cure my loneliness. Just like everyone in my generation, okay? I went online and then I found a lot of wrong information about bad things, okay? But overall, I am just a regular dude who think about ordinary things and live an everyday life, just like everyone else. I started to go to church when I was in uh, middle school. Who's in middle school right now? All right, you can relate, okay? Because I didn't want to go home. Who come to church because they don't want to go home? Okay, there's one honest person, okay? Yeah, because, you know, it's not like I have some family problem or anything like, like my mom's bad to me, it's just that it's cool to stay outside, you know? It's like I tell my, my friends, like, hey, my mom don't control me. I'm cool, okay? At the time, middle school, I didn't get much from church. But I had a very good mentor. His name was Scott. He taught me a lot. And, you know, during middle school and high school, every little, little boy was looking for love. And I wanted a girlfriend. Who's looking for a girlfriend right now? You know? Andrew. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Good, good. You're just like me. It's, it's normal. It's normal. There's nothing to laugh about. It's just guys, okay? Guys want girls, okay? The guys should be crazy for girls. If they're not crazy for girls, you don't know what they will be crazy on. So it's good for that Andrew's looking for girlfriend. <laughs> and then that time, I wasn't cool, okay? I can't get a girlfriend for some reason, okay? 
So I talked to Scott after every single one of my rejections. Like, hey, come on, Scott. Why nobody loves me? You know, typical teenage stuff. Are you like that, Andrew? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. But at the time, he told me something important. Okay, it was like after my first five or six or seven high school rejection. You know, girls rejected me. He told me like, I am a person that's full of love, and I know how to love. And you guys remember this line. It's gonna come back in、uh, later in my testimony. So after high school, I stopped going to church because I don't have to anymore. I can stay out as long as I want, as late as I want, because I'm a college kid now. Okay, and after all those broken relationship in high school and middle school, I, I just couldn't secure a stable relationship. And of course, I have no idea what love is. All I know about love is from some TV show or some Japanese drama. And I, I, as you can see, I did my hair like that, you know. And then I, I go online and found these all these weird information about dating, like how to get a girl. Basically, I was just a frustrated loser that no one wants, and I was hanging out with all these losers too. And there was a movement called the pickup artist. Does anyone know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, watch out for that guy. And then it's just basically guys trying to have sex with girls, try to get laid. And then there are so many methods and wrong idea at the time. And I was just downloading all these weird stuff in my head. So my mindset was changed. My new goal is to make a lot of money and appear as successful as possible, so I can have relationship with all these different women as possible. So I chose an industry. That is full of girls because I thought I have some fashion sense in it. So I studied to be a fashion designer or apparel designer because I I, I think I dress pretty good. I, I like to wear nice stuff too, so it was enjoyable for me. And I worked really hard, and I was successful. I was pretty successful. Okay,、uh, I was 26, and I was the design director of a company that I worked for. And here's are the. Picture of me representing the company that I work for, accepting awards from Macy's, and then、uh, that's Macy's CEO、uh, back then. And then there's a picture of me having dinner with a CEO of Dress Barn, and、uh, that one. The next one is、uh, me going to Hong Kong,、uh, meeting with Under Armour. I have business meeting, cool business meeting everywhere in the states and everywhere around the world. And so many business trips, like Kohl's, Target, Bonton, all kinds of cool stuff. And I feel like I have achieved my goal. Okay, in college, girls want to be with me. You know, hey, I'm a apparel designer, but I'm not gay. It's a very good pickup line. But <laughs> girls start to want to talk to me. They're interested in my life, about me. They're interested in what I do. A lot of them want to be like me, doing what I do. And I go to clubs and bars almost every other week. Okay, meet different girls,、uh, have relationship with them. I was not rich, but I could look pretty stand up in front of people. So at that time, you look at my life, you'll be like, "Oh, life was good. Oh, this guy is happy, and life is easy, and I, I know what I want, and I know how to get it." What I never noticed was my mind was changed. I was brainwashed by all these online pickup artists. It made me gave up my standard and my innocence. I thought that something like that is what it means to be a man. Sleeping with a lot of women is what how to measure a success of a man. And、uh, breaking up with women、uh, made some women sad. It's just like it's just part of life. Okay, I'm giving them what I want anyway, so they should give me what I want. I have regret. After every breakup, but I can just look for another girl, and it will be an easy fix. Life will have no purpose. It's just a game of cat and mouse. I was arrogant, full of pride, and had absolutely no moral value at all. And I thought that was happiness. So one day, my mom came to my place where I lived, and then my younger sister told her, "Mommy, Ethan is a manhole." Every time I see him, he is with a, a different girl. You should check your son. And I, I was I was pissed off. Okay, it's not my fault, right? Okay, these girls had fun too. I'm 29 years old, and then I can get married with any 
girls I want now, okay? I can do whatever I want. And the truth is, even after all these relationships, I still feel lonely, okay? My mom talked to me about it and I told me I should stop uh, playing these uh, games and settle down with the family. And that's, that really hits me because that reminded me that that's what I always wanted. That, that, that was the beginning of the journey is to find a family and to have a family. So that's what I did, okay? I was dating this girl. She was pretty nice. She was pretty good looking, okay personality. But after all these pickup artists BS, my moral value was completely different. It was a complete mess. And what, what was on my mind was marriage is just a piece of paper. You know, it's nothing important. You know, have you heard that? Marriage is just a piece of paper, okay? Yeah, and I, as like a pickup artist and successful apparel design director, I can make any girl happy. My dad was not a good man. He left my mom, so I won't be like him. I'm gonna be better, okay? I already figured out in life, so of course I can figure out this marriage thing too. No problem. I'll just stop my current lifestyle and just become a good man. So I got married for no reason because I thought marriage was easy or whatever marriage means to me. It was just a process in life that everyone has to go through and divorce is just another one of those processes. I thought once I got married, I got the paper, that marriage certificate would cure my loneliness and it would go away, it would disappear. And in less than six months, my marriage fall apart. That marriage fall apart. I know exactly why and where it went wrong. I didn't talk to her right. I still flirt with other girls, multiple girls at the same time, all the time. She don't understand me and I don't understand her. She didn't want to stay in the US. She wanted to be in Taiwan with her family, all kinds of stuff. And then anyway, the marriage fall apart, okay? And that's when I figured out that marriage was very different from all these other relationships. And I don't know what it is, but I felt different. I can handle breakup easily, but a divorce is a complete different beast. It, it kind of sounds the same when you talk about it on paper, but it's definitely different. And the truth is, it's because I was not a good man. All my mindset was based on a lie of what a successful man was. It was a show. It was a mirage. It was a joke. And the same year, I lost my job. I lost my dog. It was a husky you see on the picture. Very cute dog. Everything that I ever had, everything that I ever worked for was gone for the same reason, I guess. And I thought to myself, I used to be a person that's got everything and I got, got life figured out. But now it turns out, I don't know what I want. I have an idea of what a successful means and I got it, but it didn't mean anything. And I was heartbroken for the very first time since uh, Sandra re refused to be my girlfriend in middle school or something because I thought it would be easy, okay? Just, I thought family would be easy. It's just like dating, but for a longer period of time, okay? And uh, the year was 2015, I lost everything. I was upset, middle-aged man, 30 years old, lost my marriage. I feel like I was back in middle school again. No one wants me, I'm lost. and. Uh, this status lasted for a few months. I hated myself. I hated my life. I don't know where to turn to because I was in that lifestyle for such a long time and I thought that was successful. And that was the goal of every man. It's similar to what's happening right now with the biggest name is uh, uh, Andrew Tate. Have you guys heard his, uh, watch his video? Yeah, that's basically what I, what I did uh, before he got like, like that. That's basically what every man thought every man want. So after the divorce, I didn't want to go back to dating again. Different point of breakup. Dating is boring now, okay? But I don't know what to do. My life was sad and lonely. And so I did the unthinkable. I called up my friend that introduced me to go to church back when I was in middle school. His name is Andy, and I called my mentor of the church, if you guys still remember, his name is Scott. And uh, I told them what happened. I, I got divorced and everything, and they were very welcoming. They were like, hey, long time no see. I saw your life on Facebook. It looks great, full of happiness and success. We all know you could do it. Yeah, you're a pair of designer, good for you. 
because I was so sad. I set up a time to go see Scott. It was a Friday, and he told me uh, he's leading a youth group in the church. So that Friday, I got into my car. I drive to EFCLA in El Monte, and all of a sudden, no kidding, this hot girl called me. I, I never got a chance to know her. She told me she's singing karaoke in Hacienda High with another girl. Okay, so two girls, and she's inviting me. She said you, they can use a guy's company, and I was like, "What kind of opportunity is that? How lucky can I get?" Now, okay. I am driving down Santa Anita Avenue, facing the 10th freeway. If I go left, I can get back to the game. Meet with hot girls, sing karaoke. It could be nice, you know? Maybe something could happen. If nothing happened, I'll just spend a few dollars and get some drink and have a good time anyway. The other side, if I could turn right, uh, go to El Monte, I will go see this uh, middle aged, 40 years old dude. He and he's gonna talk to me about Jesus and say that Jesus has magic. In my head, I'm so arrogant that I think I know all the biblical story already. I was extremely arrogant, but at the time, on the car, for some reason, I told myself I don't want to go back to that old lifestyle. I don't want to, I'm tired of it. It did not make me a happier man. It made me into someone that I used to hate. Living life for the money, fame and sex. So at that night, I turned right on 10th freeway. And just like I thought that the meeting with the mentor sort of cheered me up, told me like, ah, everything's gonna be fine. Just like I know he's, what he's going to say. Ah, it's gonna be ah, time will do that and do, do this. And Jesus still love you. For some reason, that, uh, what he said, although it didn't impact my life, but I know that night, I made a right decision for some reason. I don't know if you guys can imagine. Girls, definitely not. But guys, it's like hot girls and 40 years old guy. Which one is the right decision? And you will never thought 40 years old guy is full of wisdom and he's going to give you the right direction. But that's how I felt. So after that difficult decision in front of I-10 freeway, I decided, you know what? Let's revisit this high school stuff. Okay, it's high school self group called Church Again. Maybe something uh, will come up, okay? So at that time, I made a promise to God, or mainly to myself, because back then I, I didn't believe in God. I say to God, or I say to myself, I will give God a chance, okay, to prove to me that He exists. I'll go to church if any of these church people ask me to do anything or go anywhere. I'll do wherever, I'll do whatever even if I don't want to. It's like telling Jesus, like, come on, dude, you know, show up. You said you're God, right? Prove it. And of course, now I know that I never talk to God that way. Now I know he's real, but back then I, I didn't know. And just remember, this is a testimony. It's supposed to show changes. So I started attend uh, Andy's church, uh, which is uh, very close to my house in Monrovia. It's called Impact Harvest Church. Sunday service is still boring. I don't understand anything what the pastor is saying. And, but start to hang out with these church people. I started to go to small group. And one day, it was a Saturday, out of nowhere, this guy called, called me. His name is Jack. He called me like, hey, we gonna go clean up the church's uh, storage area. And we need to throw away some stuff. And we need some, uh, someone to do some heavy lifting. So you wanna come? We can do it together. Are you available? And of course, I don't want to go. Why would, why would anyone want to clean up a storage area in a church? I said to myself, I'm like, I'm a design director. Do you know that? I don't even clean up my own table. Why would I clean up your church? At least what I can do is I made it, I'm disciplined to myself, so I keep my promise to myself. So I went anyway. I went to church and saw the senior pastor, Jack Lee. He was there too. And he was being, being friendly, just like he is uh, to everyone. And he asked me, how's life? And while well, he was cleaning up the hallway. And I replied, life sucks. Like, life does suck. It's like, I just got through a divorce. I'm still in the middle of a divorce. How can life be good? All of a sudden he turned around and he said, without a purpose. And I was like, what? And then he's like, life sucks. 
without a purpose. And in my head, I just stood there for a minute and go like, whoa, Mr. Purpose, what, what makes you think I need your advice, okay? Oh, oh, look at my life. My life is so purpose, so I'm cleaning up the hallway, okay? So I didn't say it out loud, but the whole idea of purpose was just not smart to me. Of course, I have a purpose, you know, in my head. I'm like, just like everyone else, you know, I want to get married, I want to have a family, I want to make a lot of money, become a designer, big houses, nice car, hot wife, right? That's my purpose, right? I had it, I had all of it, and look where I am now, okay? What kind of dumb statement is that? Life sucks without a purpose. But then he asked me, what do you think your purpose is? Matter of fact, who are you? And the question offended me that time. And I was like, what do you mean? Who are you? I'm, I'm Ethan, okay? I'm the lead designer of you know, a group. I'm a dude that can get a, any girl that I want and girls want to be with me, guys want to be like me, okay? I, I said something similar, not that strong, but he continued to ask me, like, no, not who you are in the world or how successful you are in your job, it's who are you? Who are you in God's eyes? And after I heard that, I was like, what is this guy talking about? Now I know because it's, it, the reason I think like that is because I was extremely insecure. But at the time, my mindset was like, you don't know me and I don't know you, okay? Can, can, can't you see I'm hurting, okay? Aren't you a pastor? Aren't you supposed to comfort me with some Jesus magic, okay? Make me happy or something. I, I'm here to clean up your church, okay? Clean up your storage area. Can I get a thank you at least? So I asked him, what do you mean by purpose? And he told me, well, from what you said, it seems like you identify yourself by your job title and uh, whatever you have in your, your worldly life. That's how you see yourself, okay? Purpose is something that you will do it even if it's for free. Even there is no money to be made and you will still do it because you are driven by your passion and God's righteousness, not just lust and money. And uh, the reason you said your life sucks is mostly likely it's because you don't know what your purpose is and you don't know yourself. Uh, that's Mr. Purpose right there and that's me. Okay. And after that conversation, I just wanted to leave. In my head, I, I, I hated the conversation okay, with M Mr. Purpose here. What, what do you mean I don't know myself? How dumb is that? How, what, what do you mean you'll do something for free? Okay, what, what, what kind of world are you living? Okay, we, we do things for profit no matter what. Let's just clean up the storage room and go home. I was lifting boxes, sweeping, and throwing away trash. And the whole time I was thinking, what a <clears throat> not so smart conversation. After an hour and a half, the storage room was clean. Worship song were playing at the altar. And I sat on the sofa of the uh, very first row. And I, for some reason, I don't know why, I started to pray. Because I cannot answer his question. And after all, after all these cleaning and complaining, my heart found out one thing, is that I don't know my purpose. I don't know who I am. I don't know why I'm here. And my life sucks because I don't have a purpose. And I just start crying for no reason at the time. I just feel like there's no reason, but now I know. Because I was sure that it was not because what I was going through, because I know uh, I'm part, basically partially healed after what, I, what I've been through. That clean up session made it more confused than ever. Like it created more questions in my head than gave me a purpose in life. And the next day it was Sunday service. So everything happens really fast, okay? It's like day after the next, and then you just, God just hits you with another day. So Sunday service, Andy, which uh, that guy, told me their small group is going to a retreat. And then uh, this weekend, if you can come. The truth is, I hated retreat. Who here is like retreat? Retreat, 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 okay. Okay, you like sleeping outside? Really? Okay, different than me. I hate a retreat, I hate sleeping outside, but I am now more confused than ever. So I made a promise that I would do anything if any church people asked me to. So I went anyway. I'm a man of my word. I don't have a job at the time, but it was okay. 
So I went snowboarding. I saw these church people doing church people thing. At the very last night, they gather up together and have a little sharing session. I've been through it when I was in middle school and high school. Everyone talk about their problem, and everyone、uh, speak about、uh, the, what what they are going through in life, and everyone pray over him or her. I've been there, done that. Okay, it's like one of those fortune teller you see on the street of Taiwan. Say,、like, hey, come on, let me tell you your future. But yeah, I I just didn't want to do it. I just didn't want to say anything to anyone. So I just watch these church people doing these religious ceremony. And、uh, at the end, the small group leader asked me to come into the middle and say, "You don't have to say anything. We just want to pray over you, pray for you." And I was like, "Okay, that's something new. Okay, you want to like prophesize over me or something? I've been there, done that. I, I, you know, you don't have to tell me anything." So as you can, right now you can see, even after that encounter by God at the、uh, storage room、uh, cleanup session, I was still extremely arrogant. And I'm still I'm searching. I began to search for answers, but I'm still part of the world. And I was looking for something, but I don't think I need it.、Uh, I was still the same old me. I went into the middle. Everyone started to pray for me, and the first girl who opened up her mouth said, "She don't know why, but God told her I'm a person who is full of love, and I know how to love." And I was shocked. Who still remember this line? <laughs> yeah, I was shocked because if you guys still remember, that's the same line Scott told me when I was in high school when I got rejected by different girls, <clears throat> and then、uh, Scott told me like, "Hey, you're a person full of love, and you know how to love." It was the first time I feel like God is speaking to me. He's speaking to me with something that only I know. Okay, only that's important in my life. If I say to you or anyone, it's like, "Hey, God." You are a person full of love, and you know how to love. You'd be like, you're okay, you're okay. You're okay. I, I thank you. But to me, it's like, hey, I am God. Listen to me. That was the turning point. I feel like God is using this girl, speaking through her mouth,、uh, telling me that He exists and He is listening and He actually loves me and He knows what I'm going through. I'm just in the middle. I just burst out into tears, and I don't know why. I'm a, I'm a tough guy. Okay, I might I might look really small, but I'm okay. I don't show any weakness. It's just not me, okay. But I just couldn't control it. It's like something that I was trying to find and finally clicked. And、uh, after that retreat, I know God is real and He is talking to me. I was pretty much healed. It's like, oh wow, okay. I'm not sad and hopeless anymore、uh, as I used to be. But there's still something that I need to find out. That is what Pastor Jack's question: Who am I and what is my purpose? So, just like I know I was partially healed because I made a promise to go to go wherever church people tell me to go, so I made another promise. Okay, this time to God. Okay, I pray to God. Hey Jesus, thank you for showing up, but I am still not happy. I still don't feel loved. Here's what I'll do. Okay, I'll read your book. I finally read your book. Okay, I, I pretend I read it all the time, but this time I will read it. Okay, I'm going to finish your book, cover to cover, in a year, and let's see if you can change me. If you, if you can tell me who I am, okay, and what is my purpose. That's a very impolite promise, but don't 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 do that. But read your Bible, read your Bible. It, it's read your Bible. Seriously, read your Bible. Who 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 read Bible this morning? Yay! <laughs> But this prayer marks the beginning of my Christian life, and as you can see, even after God spoke to me, I was still arrogant. I still think I got it all figured out. Okay, I thought I, my, I know my life better than God know my life. Okay, so it was more like a challenge that to hum, humble myself and try to learn what on the what what's on the Bible. And let me tell you, Bible is an amazing book. It, it will humble you. I started reading it, and I found out that the stories are very, very interesting. Okay, no one in the Bible is perfect. I don't, I, I don't know anything about the Bible. Before I started reading, I thought all the biblical characters are perfect. Okay, like David is just a perfect king who do everything right. Solomon, just the smartest man on earth who can figure out everything. And Moses is just this brave person. And Abraham is. 
this perfect person. I thought Bible was about like all these perfect per people's uh, life. And uh, that's what the youth group told me too, because the youth group only talk about the good side of God. So I, I started reading the Bible, and then uh, I, I started to find out that Christianity is very different from what I used to understand. So uh, at the time, I, I didn't finish up the book yet. After I read the first five book, I called up Pastor Jack and told him I was sorry. I told him I don't know what I am. I told him I don't know what, what my purpose is, but I want to get baptized. And I cried on the phone with him, and he cried on the phone with me. It was a stunning moment in my life. Maybe it doesn't mean anything to you, but that's when I feel so small and so not in control. And everything that I know uh, and all these uh, self-help websites was a joke. So that was me. So I started reading the Bible, and reading was not hard for me. Uh, there are multiple ways to read the Bible, find time uh, with my phone on an iPad or listen to an audio Bible. Four chapters a day, not that hard. If you, uh, you, you can push through the book of Numbers and Deuteronomy, you can, you can still do it. It will only take a few minutes out of your life, to uh, a, your day to read it. The hard thing is to understand it. Why are there Ten Commandments? What is the purpose of it? Why do these prophets repeat themselves so many times? Why do I have to know which tribe control which territory? Like, like the book of Joshua, you know? In the beginning, it was fun. It was battles and everything. But at the end, it's like reading a map without a picture. So I have so many questions that came to my mind. I did a lot of research and I asked a lot of people and not many people can answer to me or explain it to me. Everyone just sort of tell me like, why don't you pray about it? Who, 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 who heard this uh, line before? Why don't you pray about it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> So um, I, I looked it up online and I read a lot of articles to search and, and listen to sermon. And once I understand it, the world started to make sense. It was why I was sinning makes sense. Why I want to sin start to make sense. What is sin start to make sense. The law of the Bible is not just something that Moses pulled out of uh, his behind to regulate people, but it's actually a roadmap for a fulfilling life, a guideline to happiness. It's a waypoint to what love is. So I finally started to understand the wisdom inside this book. And this book is so amazing. It has answers to everything that is happening in our life, even right now. And I remember at the time, I couldn't put the book down. I put, couldn't put the Bible down. I, I just want to know what's happened next, okay? What, I, I want to know what God's decision is, and I want to know why. I, wanted, I want to know why Job was treated so unfairly. I want to know why Jeremiah keeps telling one to just give up. I want to know why Esther has no fear. I want to know why Daniel is so stubborn. I want, and I want to know why, you know, why God is so strict sometimes. You know, like, 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 like Moses hit the rock twice. Hey, you can't get into the promised land. David counts so many, how many people is in his kingdom. And God's like, hey, dude. You, you, can't, you don't have the right to count people, only I can. And, and you're going to pay for it. And he punished David for it. And I want to understand why. The more I read into the Bible, the more question I have. And the more I found out the answer, and I found that <coughs> this book is not about being a nice person. That's what I, I thought it was. I thought the Bible was supposed to be uh, like teach you how to smile, how, how, how to always be a nice guy kind of thing, how to be caring, how to... Uh, not protect yourself, you know, turn the other cheek when you get hit. Basically, how to make men weak. That's what I thought Bible was. But this book, Bible, right here, is actually teaching you how to be strong, teaching everyone how to be strong, how to, how to be a warrior, mentally and physically, how to not give up. And uh, basically, how to be a man of wisdom and with righteousness and why if men are not strong in our society, and our, then our society is doomed. So the more I read, the more I want to improve myself, improve my life. I become happy, fulfilled. I got married with the girl who prophesies over me. She's an amazing Christian who can answer a lot of questions while I was reading God's word. She actually helped me a lot in the beginning, but now it's, you know, it's like, hey, I'm the man of the household right now. So people at church, are no longer church people to me, but my brothers and sisters. So life started to turn around. It feels great. I was healed. I was happy. 
But what I found is, <clears throat> how come so many people don't understand this book? This life-changing experience has made me a better person, has made me a husband. I was becoming a dad, and my life got back to normal. I felt powerful. I felt in control of myself. How come so many Christians don't understand it, despite being Christians for 10 or 20 years? The more I look at the society and compare to churches uh, to, of today, a lot of time, I cannot tell the difference. And churches run away from social issues, run away from the world, instead of standing firm on solid rock and rebuke what is happening in our world, Christians hide in their churches and hide in their small bubble. They talk to each other, make each other feel good about their own life. And then every time we go to a small group, it's still the same thing, okay? A lot of Christians were just one what I used to have, okay? God is just some imaginary friend who's always there, and maybe he will fix your life, and maybe, um, but it's, at the end, it's all up to him, okay? Our most powerful weapon is prayer, but it's actually up to God, okay, if he answers your prayer or not. A lot of these so-called Christians chase after worldly success, just like I used to do. And they say, like, I'll give myself to the Lord and be more like Jesus. But they will still do the same thing every day and uh, whenever they get a chance to do something different. As for me, I was so fulfilled. I, I feel like I have to read the book every day. I was so happy. I feel the need to share this good news with others. Okay? I feel like I need to make people understand. I need to make my brothers and sisters understand. I see so much courage in these characters in the Bible. But how come my brothers and sisters don't have any? How come they run away? All they do is uh, pray and give it to the uh, Lord's hand. How come Christians don't understand God loved working with courageous people? God didn't just build an ark and give it to Noah. He told Noah to help and, and help him to build an ark. God didn't take people out of Egypt. He told Moses, help Moses to get them out of Egypt. God didn't just defeat the enemy of David. David dared to follow God, and then he became the king, as we all, all know. And the more I read the book, the more conflicted I felt as a, a Christian. The more I feel that I want to do something. And just like I read the Bible to, is to, to challenge God, now I want to challenge Christians who don't read their Bible. I know it's, it is essential to, to change the world, to change our culture. Christians is the only hope to change the world and to change our culture. If we don't challenge the status quo, no one will, okay? If we don't create a biblically strong man to lead this world, the other kinds of strong people will lead the world to the wrong promised land. This world could be led by people like what I used to be, arrogant, self-righteous, sexual immorality. Instead of controlling our emotion and lust, it would be cool just to chase after money and fame, okay? And we will call that righteousness. We will call that masculinity, okay? We will become a society that's filled up with sin, and we call it freedom. So the more I read the Bible, I just have the urge to say something and do something. And I want to encourage Christians the most, because I know if we lose the saltiness, if we put our light under the table, the world will not see the light, and our country will go into a deep, dark hole. So we have to be strong, and this country was founded by Christians, built by Christians, and now it will take strong Christians, righteous Christians, to reclaim it. And I look around our society, the LGBTQ is like a cancer that never stopped growing. In the beginning, they only wanted to be themselves, okay? Now, they want to push down their ideology into every person's their personal sex life into our public school, into our TV and everything. Abortion was supposed to be safe, legal, and rare, according to Hillary Clinton, but now in California, we can kill babies even after they were born already. Within a month, they can kill your kid. The word gay used to be like a bad word in middle school, like, hey, uh, you're stupid. But now it's almost like a compliment. Like you have to encourage it. You have to encourage everyone to be homosexual. It's just weird. 
the society is encouraged, kept encouraged this complex sex lifestyle. And our society is giving hormones to kids. And right now, we don't know if baby's born. We don't know if it's a boy or girl. And Christians don't know why. All we do is just pray and hand it to the Lord. We don't do anything. We, I saw so much injustice in our society. I was angry and want to do something about it. So I told my wife, I want to start a YouTube channel to talk about my belief in God and to talk about God's law and how we as Christ followers, we should look in how we, sh we should look in our society and through the Bible. I want to do it in Chinese because there are a lot of channels that's doing in English already. But most importantly, I want to work with God. I want to take another chance. I ask God to prove that He's real. He answered. I ask God to turn my life around with His word. He did. Now I want to work with God. I want God to use my life to worship Him. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to speak the truth and add value in people's life. I want to save this country. I want to change the world. I want to spread the righteousness of God to the world. I want to protect our church from worldly influence. I want to encounter God in my everyday life. So that time I prayed to God and said, now you have changed me. Now you have fixed my life. Now please guide me and give me the purpose in my life. Use me to change the people who are like what I used to be like. Make me fearless. Make me bold. I don't want to compromise anymore. I don't want to compromise to the world. And I don't want to see your churches compromise. My wife said, yeah, you should. I'm 100% support of you. I, I think that is your purpose. And that's when I, everything started. Uh, it sounds like a midlife crisis because I, I, I want to start a YouTube channel and uh, am I 34 years old? But I just feel like I had to do it. It just, it just feel right. So after some preparation, in 2018, somewhere in March, I recorded the first episode of Project Hip Christian with my wife. And on the day I was publishing, the company that I used to work for said they're cutting staff, okay? And then uh, they had to let me go. And I was like, what the heck, God? This is your ministry. Why, why are you making this difficult? W what's going on, okay? And all of a sudden, I remember one thing that Pastor Jack told me. What is your purpose? What is something that you will do even if it is for free? And that to me at the time is to spread the gospel, to give value to people, to build people. My purpose, our purpose is to honor and worship our Lord Jesus Christ because he loved us and he saved us. And I still want it, okay? And that's when I, that's when I know. It's like, wow, okay? I need to do this for free. That's my purpose. That is the toughest time that I've ever been through, okay? My wife was pregnant. I lost my income. She bought a Tesla Model 3, and I just got an electric car as well. We moved into a new place, which cost more. The pressure was insane. But I want to do it, and I know I need to do it. And I know I want to work with God. And the truth is, I don't want to do anything else. That's, that, that's the main reason. I, I don't want to do anything else. I want to read the Bible all the time. I want to listen to sermon all the time. And for some reason, all of my friends, my leftist friend, they just left me. They think I become a person that's full of hate, uh, saying that I'm a hypocrite. They say that they know exactly uh, what kind of person I, I am, I was. I, now I'm like I'm reading the Bible and talk about morality, I, and I'm just a person who's trying to be famous on YouTube, and I'm using a, a Christians and the Bible to, as an excuse to do it. What they don't understand is, I will do that for free. And I'm not making money doing it. I just feel I have the urge to do it. I just want to talk about God 24-7. I don't want money. I don't want to be famous. I just want to fulfill my purpose. And if I don't do it, I will actually feel bad, extremely bad. I will feel like I didn't st stand firm on my faith. I will not be able to teach my girl uh, anything in life if I don't change my life and follow God.
everything I say, I, I cannot influence my girl if I don't do it myself. Yeah, so I have to sell my, uh, all my belonging and follow Jesus. I will lose the happiness and in a sense of fulfilling that the Bible gave me. So I have to keep doing it. So uh, the road wasn't easy, okay? After that, I had a job at a radio station and for some, re some reason, they fired me right before Thanksgiving of 2019. And then COVID hit, no one has a job that time. And then I got a job at a Kingdom for Jesus to work on AI News, that's the start of AI News. I, I work as uh, the main host of the AI News. After a year or half a year, the ministry ran out of money, okay? They have to close it down. So it's like when you see God's uh, working, you'll see a lot of why, why is this happening? And we basically have two choices. Three of us can give up and go back to work at the world, or we can take over the channel, be our own boss. And that decision was just not very smart. We had no money. The channel subscriber count can't even support one of us, can't even support half of us. We, don't, we didn't get any income from YouTube commercial, but all three of us have one goal. We have one common purpose, and that is to love Jesus and to give our life to Jesus. And we need to tell the world that we need to turn back to God. We need to exalt God and his word in the Bible. And we need to give courage to every Christian that we can touch. Tell them that they have a purpose too. Their purpose is to change the people around them. That all Christians have the same purpose, that is to love Jesus and to honor and worship God. And we know this is necessary because no one is doing it in Chinese. Every church wants to do something online. Every church wants to do something new. But the truth is, most churches can't stand what's going on right now in our society. But they can't speak like we do because they're, they, they, they're scared that people will leave and won't go back to their church. We, as a ministry, we don't have that baggage. If people don't want to watch it, they will just unsubscribe. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to tell them anything. But we can tell the truth. And we have the ability to not be scared of people. Our service not only can empower people, but also empower churches, Chinese churches at the same time. Let them take the stand and do the right thing. To say something like, love is not just anything goes and you can do whatever you want. Our limits define who we are. We need to set our limits according to the Bible. And the Bible told us what wisdom comes from. It's the fear of the Lord. So we know that we cannot be scared of anything. Not money, not people, not ourselves. We have to keep doing it and we want to keep doing uh, to keep working with God. And that is our purpose. And it is the only way to keep ourselves strong, is to stand in our purpose and to reach our full potential. A lot of our viewers thank us and say, thank you for your sacrifice. But the truth is, it doesn't feel like a sacrifice. It doesn't feel like we're sacrificing anything. We see growth in our faith, in our life, in our spiritual life. And through this, not only that we helped a lot of people to be stronger, to become a much better person for ourselves too. So with that faith in mind, we continue to work on AI News Ministry. And I continue to work on Project Hip, Hip Christian. And we are not rich. If you look at our income, it's always in the negative. But for some reason, we can always have extra job. And for some reason, we can always uh, receive extra donation to us and pay our rent and food and gas. And uh, it's been three years. If you look, at, look our, uh, at the income of the company, you will still see negative every month. But we didn't need to borrow any money. To, we can still feed three families. Somehow, we just have enough. That is a miracle by itself. And although we are living in uh, extreme poverty by today's standard, but we are so happy that we're doing it because this is our purpose and this is what we're made for. So not only financially we witness miracles every month, we witness countless miracles in our ministry by our viewers. We have a few homosexual person email us saying that 
thank us for our video. He wanted to uh, change his life for the better. He wants to know God, uh, and he knows that God has His plan uh, in his life too. And it is hard for him to uh, not to think about uh, having sexual relationship with another man, but he knows that he is strong and he can do it too. And uh, he will stay pure until God changes his life. And then uh, he will not have sexual relation with other men or women until God show him his wife. Now, we have like at least three, uh, two viewers thought they were transgender and they saw our video saying that they thank God for showing this video to them. They know that they have a purpose now in their life. Gender and sex is fixed and uh, they have a purpose. They will turn away from transgender surgeries. We have a lot of non-believers who turn to Christ saying that they didn't believe in uh, God or Jesus before, but they just feel like something's wrong with this world. They didn't know why the world becomes so weird. And now they know that there is a God and his law and his morality is actually the reason that they feel so conflict, um, conflicted. But most importantly, I want to stress this one. We have Christians, tons of Christians, a lot of Christians message us saying that they are so glad that this channel existed. They feel powerless at their church. Their church has conformed to the world. When they ask what they can do to challenge the world, the church leader just, or pastor just told them Romans 13, okay, yeah, just follow uh, whatever is in power. They finally found a community in our channel, in our chat room, finally feel like they are not alone and they want to build a strong Christ-following group in their church, in their life as well. That's all around the U.S. and in Taiwan as well. They know that they cannot compromise anymore. They have a world to save, not just elections, but our own life, our family. And a lot of them want to start to homeschool their kids because they want to take back their relationship with their children and the right of education back into their own hands. And with our faith, that little faith we have in our heart and willingness and commitment to work with God, we not only see our lives changing, and we met so many people that we thought that it existed. And this is what brings us joy and confidence more than anything. So the truth is, this is the happiest uh, that I've ever been before. <coughs> I was, like before I was getting an award from Macy's and Coles. right now I'm living the dream, okay? This is my American dream. I have two beautiful daughters, I have a beautiful wife, and a group of team that is fighting the same fight and a purpose in my life. For the first time, I can say this is right and that is wrong, not because of what I think, but because this is what God says in the Bible, and our goal is to help everyone to see the light, to see the truth. And it all began with a decision, a tough decision I made in front of I-10 Freeway. I gave God a chance to change my life, and He did. So, Proverbs 9.10 told us, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. We can go to school, gain knowledge, go to work, Gain experience. Try to be the best as we can be in the world. Uh, but the truth is, it won't give us happiness. And what we should do to find happiness, uh, here's what the Bible says. Proverbs uh, 3, 13 to 18 told us, Happy is a man who finds wisdom and who acquires understanding. For she is more profitable than silver, and her revenue is better than gold. She is more precious than jewel. Nothing you desire is compared with her. Long life in her right hand, in her, in her left, riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant and all her path peaceful. She's a tree of life to those who embrace her and those who hold her are happy. Happiness doesn't come from this world. It comes from wisdom which is from fear of the Lord. So this is my testimony. It's nothing crazy. I didn't do drugs. I was never in a gang. 
uh, I didn't have a car crash and I went to hell and came back with suicide or anything. I am just a regular dude who thought worldly success could make me happy and was completely wrong in that direction. And Jesus came and saved me from myself and gave me a purpose in life. And right now, I'm happy because I have the fear of the Lord. Because now, I'm more profitable than silver and my revenue is better than gold. More precious than jewel and nothing the world desire can compare with what I have. Right now, my desire is to change the world. Psalm 97.10 told us, Let those who love the Lord hate evil. We are Christians. We love our God. We love our Lord Jesus. We hate what is happening in our society. Human trafficking, child sex slave, abortion, sex education in our school, communism in our public school, try to brainwash our kids, LGBTQ agenda, castrating our children, giving them sex hormone, all in the name of diversity and inclusion. Our purpose is to work with God to stop these evil and to stop these evil from spreading. And that's why we at AI News and Project Hip Christian will kept doing it and will continue to do it because this is our purpose and it is what brings us happiness. And uh, we have a lot to do. Uh, we are seeing the result, not just by us, but the world is changing and uh, God is moving. And uh, this is my testimony.